Hi, it's Christy, and I'm going to just share with you a, a few thoughts that I have about Deuteronomy chapter 30. We are in session 21 of Water, Fire, Stone, the Life and Times of Moses. And I just have to do a quick shout out, a quick thank you to our lesson writer, Leah Case, because truly she has brought to life the life and the times of Moses. And you know, I have, and I know you have as well, have just so often reflected on how relevant these lessons and this particular study has been to us. And if you've been following all along, you've already seen that, but even more so today, because we are truly living in unprecedented times and it's different. And we're not quite sure maybe how to navigate it. You know, um, what we, we're just on what? Week six of quarantine life, which may not be your best life. i trying to make it my best life because this is the life that I have right now. But I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm ready for it to be over. And I know so many of you are too. But you know what? I was thinking about how our life is. We are empty nesters. Just me and my husband and we've got a dog. And uh, so our home is quiet. And I know right now I can see those eye rolls because your home is anything but quiet, you know, because you've got just everything going on. And and I know, I remember those days um, when our son was growing up. He's an adult married man now. But when he was growing up, our house was always filled with a bunch of boys. I mean, just all of his friends came to our home to play. And uh, I can remember when they would be over and just having fun, I would just take advantage of that time and just kind of slip away and go to my prayer chair and uh, you know spend some time in the Word and some time in prayer and pray over his friends. And uh, you know, just speaking their names to the Lord. And I, I can still hear their voices you know, where's your mom? Where's your mom? And then I can hear my son's voice as well say, she's in her prayer chair. I just imagine, you know, until they got it really figured out the first time that they heard him say that they probably had all kinds of question marks, you know, a prayer chair. What is that? You know, like a timeout chair? <laughs> well, kind of, right? It really is. But you know what? I, I know it can be a challenge to have that quiet time right now. And so I want to encourage you, if you can, just five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, just get away for a moment. You know, maybe it's a chair in the corner or walk outside, whatever, and spend that time with the Lord. Because I know what my son quickly figured out, and your family will connect those dots too, is that I was a better me. I was a better mom. I was so much better after I had that time with the Lord. I had more patience and I was more fun. So you know what? They will quickly figure that out and they will learn to respect your time, you know, your your time out, you know, as you go and either go to a, a chair, like I said, in a designated place, uh, you know, your closet or outdoors, wherever it is, because the Lord is speaking right now. He is absolutely 100% speaking to us in this time that we're in right now. And you know, as I was thinking about Deuteronomy chapter 30, and um, Moses is really describing uh, what is going to happen, you know, these, these things that God is going to do and how he's going to restore his people. But before that, and, and maybe some of you read this and maybe you didn't, but Deuteronomy chapter 28 describes the blessings and the curse that is going to come upon the people. And, and so he substantiates the point that he's going to make, which is our memory verse, you know, choose life. This is why you obey. This is how you obey. You're choosing life. But listen to what is recorded. And if you haven't opened your Bibles yet, just go ahead and hit pause. Go get your Bible. And we're going to read together from Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm going to read verse 2. And all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you 
if you will obey the Lord your God. So what he's saying is the blessings are going to overtake you. There's going to be so many blessings. You're not going to be able to handle it. That's what God wants to do for us. And it's just simple obedience. It's just simple obedience. We're created for blessings. But if we don't obey, look over at verse 45. He says, so all these curses shall come on you and pursue you and overtake you, just the opposite, overtaking blessings versus overtaking curses. You know, it's our choice. Until you are destroyed because you would not obey the Lord your God by keeping his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you. See, so we have a choice right here. You know, it's simple obedience, great, humongous, overtaking blessings or curses, you know, so he, he's put it all before us, you know, choose life, choose life is choosing the blessings of God. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and just kind of turn over there, I counted the word obey six times in this chapter. And I think the word obey is a very misunderstood word uh, by most people and including Christians. You know, we think of it in terms of jumping hoops, but the reality of obedience, of obeying the Lord, is relaxing in his love. It's relaxing in his love. And, and let me explain what I mean by that because maybe you've never heard obedience described that way. In our home, as I mentioned, we have a dog right now. It's, it's actually my brother's dog. And, you know, she's still kind of learning the ropes in our home. And so right now I have a barrier of chairs <laughs> to keep her on the other side. And you know what? She's good with that. She's, she's totally fine with that. You know, she's laying on her rug and she's relaxed. She's in the space that I created for her, that barrier that I've created for her. She's obeying, staying in that place. You know, she could try to shimmy under the chairs and around the chairs and get here in my space and kind of be a distraction, but she's obeying. And in her obedience, she's very relaxed. And see, and that's what the Lord has done. You know, part of obedience is that he's, he's asking us to do things and he's telling us not to do others, but they're simple. They're things that we're able to do. And as we do what the Lord has commanded us to do, we learn to relax in his love. And what he's asked us to do is very simple. It is not hard. In fact, look at verse 11 in Deuteronomy chapter 30. For this commandment, which I command you today, is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. You can do this. You know this. Further, he says, verse 12, it is not in heaven that you should say who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say who will cross the sea for us to get, to get it for us and to make us hear it that we might observe it. But the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart that you may observe it. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? You know what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 2, that the word of God is written in our hearts. We do know it. We were created to know him. We, we instinctively, for lack of a better word, know what is right and what is wrong. We know that God has created everything that is around us. We look at our hand and we can see the evidence of God's creation. And you know what? I was thinking about how um, when we learn to relax in God's love, how it changes us, you know, and, and, and I am liking to obedience. You know, when I first began uh, Bible study 30 some odd years ago, I, I don't know, it's 35, I'll say 35 years ago, you know, decades ago. Before that time, I was a worrier. I was the best worrier. In fact, my husband used to brag and it would make me so mad. He would say, I don't ever have to worry because she worries enough for both of us. <laughs> 
True statement, if you know my husband, just ask him. But you know what? I realized one day that um, I wasn't a warrior anymore. And I remember it was just, it wasn't something I thought about. You know, it wasn't like a, a, a chain thought, you know, where I was thinking about one thing and one thing led to another. It wasn't anything like that. And I really believe it was a realization that the Holy Spirit was giving me that I wasn't a warrior anymore. And I was like, wow, I'm not a warrior anymore. I've truly learned that through obedience to God's simple commands, I've learned how to relax in his love. I'm not a warrior anymore. And um, that evening when my husband came home, I said, guess what? You're never gonna believe, this is gonna sound so strange, but I figured out something today. And he said, what? And I said, I'm not a warrior anymore. And he looked at me and the look on his face said everything. But he said, you're right. You're not a warrior anymore. And see, that's what God's word has done for me. In the practical, I'm not a warrior anymore. And that has given me great peace. And I have great peace because I've learned how to relax in God's love. And no matter what is going on around me, and I guarantee you, my life has not always been easy. My life has had many obstacles. It's had many difficulties. It's had many heartbreaks. But in the midst of all, I have had great peace. I've had great joy. And I have experienced relaxing in God's love. You know, as I was just kind of pondering all of this and, and what the exhortation is in Deuteronomy chapter 30, you know, to choose life. I thought, you know, the, the entire Bible can be boiled down to one word, and that word is come, come. The Lord is beckoning us to come to him for salvation. He's beckoning on us to come to him for peace. He's beckoning us to come and to listen to him. He wants to pour out upon us. He wants to speak to us. He wants to give us wisdom. He wants to give us knowledge. He wants to counsel us. His word is come. And for some, the word is come back. Listen to what Jesus says from Matthew chapter 11. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, there it is right there. Come to me. You know, my burden's light. My yoke is easy. This is where you're going to find rest. You know, rest from the things that are concerning your cares and your concerns, the what ifs, the things you don't know. You know, we really don't know what next week or next month or even six months from now is going to look like, but God does. Come to me and I will give you rest. That's what he's saying. And we do that through, as I said, through simple obedience. It's easy. We know how to do this. And so those are just some of my thoughts about this chapter. And I know that you're going to study and dig into this chapter. And there's so very much more there to be gleaned. And, and I know that when you have your Zoom meetings, that they're going to be rich and you're going to just be that iron sharpening iron. And I know that the Lord is going to restore us back together again, just like he's going to restore the children of Israel back to himself. He's going to restore us back together again. And we're going to meet again in person, face to face. So I love you. I pray that you're blessed by this simple sharing from my heart to yours. And just a great big God bless you because he loves you and he wants to overtake you with blessings.